All right, inspired by the pastel drawing portraits, um, especially of Toulouse-Lautrec, I'm working on a portrait of Oscar Wilde. And I'm doing the base painting, stealing some colors. I'll add more references later. I'm going to turn on his um, photo underneath so I can just build these up quickly and then get rid of the whites where needed. So even though a lot of it's bright, you don't want to be afraid of color. Putting a little bit of it everywhere is important. But I want to get the highlights down for sure. Remember, the base painting is not at all about detail. It's about filling in the space behind. Sometimes doing it rather aggressively. When I do this with traditional media, I like to work with wax crayon. And I'll often use a combination, especially in portraits I like, of wax crayon and watercolor. I've been ignoring the hair. <clears throat> and in some of my references, the hair is often where you have a lot of the, the fun kind of color explorations. I can also throw in some naturalistic colors. Now a brush like this is wonderful in how it just sweeps and tapers and works, but it does take quite a bit of processing. So every once in a while I'm going to hit Command S and save my progress so it doesn't slow down too much. And on newer versions of Photoshop you can work while it's saving which is helpful. You don't have to just sit and wait for it like you used to. Oh, that purple is quite nice. And that's actually from the colored photo. And Oscar Wilde was kind of known to wear some outlandish colors. A bit of a dandy. Made himself in the way he dressed. A spectacle at times, and other times wished he was left alone. It's easy to ignore parts that aren't as interesting, things like the ears. So you want to make sure everything gets touched. And I'm still have a ways to go. Remember, this is my base painting. And until I get kind of a balance of lights and darks, everything's going to look really strong and really bright. Get a darker blue. So because these, these pastel brush mixes so nicely, I can throw in other colors and just kind of drag them acro across to get the value. Let's see. Always helpful to use red around the eyelids. I'm 
for an old photo, an old public domain photo, this has some nice lighting, some nice value contrast in it, um, a nice core shadow at his chin, which is obviously kind of a weak chin and something he was kind of vain about. Where he, so he wore a high collar, scarves, lots of things. But the lighting here does does a lot of favors. So it's a nice flattering photo. You kind of use the lighting lessons from it. If your reference has good lighting, that's helpful. All right, so let's see. What do I have? So far, not too bad. We're filling it in. Now, it does feel airbrushed quite a bit, like there's some bags under his eyes and things that have been um, softened out in the dark room, which is very, very typical of all portrait photography. You don't need Photoshop to retouch photos. But it, it can kind of look washed out and take some of the character away. Also, he has no five o'clock shadow whatsoever in this. In real life, I'm guessing there'd be some cooler tones. So I'm going to throw some greens in there, just really slight, to help hint at that transparency of the skin. Certain spots to go along with this blue and this purple. And I can steal those variations of color from myself. Especially in the highlights in the hair. Now I've played it pretty safe around the eyes. And the eyebrows. Now remember you can always paint over the top. The kind of lesson of digital painting of all sorts, no matter what kind of materials you're trying to imitate, in this case pastel, but I've done acrylic, I've done watercolor earlier in these demos, it's helpful to just um, layer up your brush strokes a lot. So you, you can see some lag there with that eyebrow. So that's why I'm going to save it. Doing a lot of things I don't like. Let's go back to my history. Let's get this back on track. That's why we have this wonderful history tool. Save it there. I also want to close other programs that I don't need. All right. Come on. Keep up with me. I feel like I can throw some deeper reds in there, especially around the eyes, underneath the nose and the hair. It's going to help everything liven up. There. Okay, now I might as well jump in and do something with the underpainting of his suit jacket. Purple makes sense. He 
even using the texture of the brush a little bit. And at this point, I want to establish a darkest dark. I don't want to be afraid of that. So I have this really, really velvety, kind of dusty purple, very dark, that I can use. Let's see, we have this dark brown that I can use on the collar and around his tie, even in the nape of his neck. And I've been avoiding the eyes. Let's go ahead, put in some dark there, and then paint back over it. Ah. It's getting ahead of me a little bit. That's what that history is for. Let's use that purple. I'm trying to dot in a pupil. There we go. And it's very soft, kind of dreamy eyes. Heavy lidded. So it's going to be important to get that. So in that soft highlight. All right. Now while I have the slightly smaller brush, even though it's just the base painting, I can draw in those eyelids. They're catching so much light. We're not being afraid of color because I'm going to layer them up. It's going to keep building. Squinting every once in a while, looking over at your navigator. So that you're not just thinking of color, you're thinking of the value that comes together. This is very much like working with crayon, which I mentioned is something I enjoy. Now to use these pastel brushes, the watercolor brushes, ones that are pressure sensitive, you need that the tablet. Otherwise it's just, if you're just using a mouse, it's just a solid hunk of pixels that you're moving around at the same rate all the time. So you need that pressure sensitivity. But I use a very cheap tablet. I use the, the cheapest wired tablet I can find by a brand that's been around forever, forever which is Wacom. W-A-C-O-M. And whatever the cheapest wired version is that I can get, that's the one I recommend to students. Uh, mine's many years old, you know, nine years old or so now, um, a bamboo tablet. Which they don't make the exact same version of anymore, but you can still find very affordable versions. And there's a lot of competitors which um, I think are actually underselling Wacom and are probably doing just fine. I just 